Rhapsody and Angie, it is so amazing to be able to share space with you today. I am excited, a big fan of both of y'all. Um, but before we get started, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to the viewers. So Rhapsody, why don't you kick us off? Who are you and what do you do? I'm the R-A-P-S-O-D. Wow. Nah, I'm, um, I'm an MC from North Carolina, uh, a creative. I like to create a lover of sports, a lover of hip hop culture um, and all those good things. It's so much more, but you know, that's, I'll let them dig. I can't give all the diamonds away just yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Angie, who are you and what do you do? I'm Angie Thomas. I'm an author of The Hate You Give on the Come Up, Concrete Rose. Um, I try to be a microphone for young people. I'm a huge hip hop head. I'm fangirling over Rhapsody right now and trying to keep my cool. <laughs> but I'm a Southern girl who is all about speaking up and speaking out. So I, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about being a Black woman in the entertainment industry and also in the literary space. I myself am an author as well, so I just know how it's, it's a lot, right? Where we have to have these platforms, hold space for other people, hold space for our readers and our listeners. So I do want to talk, Andy, I want you to kick us off about being Black in the literary space and what having that microphone um, means to you. You know, it's it's a lot of pressure at times. When, before I became published, I didn't think that a book like mine could be published because specifically in Kids Lit, where I operate, you don't see a lot of books about black girls and you definitely don't see a lot of books about black girls dealing with police brutality. And that's what I had. And now we're starting to see more diversity in Kids Lit, but publishing still has such a long way to go. Um, it, it's disheartening to know that when I walk into meetings um, at publishing houses, it will be very rare to see anyone who looks like me. And right now we're having a huge push towards diversifying the tables. Um, because if we want diverse books, we gotta have diversity as far as the people who are in those spaces. So at times I feel like I not only have to be a creative, but I have to be an advocate. And I think it's a privilege if you don't have to do any kind of advocacy in the space that you're in. But as black women, we often find ourselves having to be advocates um, in so many different ways. And that's what I have to do now um, in the position that I'm in. So I have hope that things will change, but I can't lie, it's exhausting. It's exhausting sometimes, you know, being the only black face or, or being the only black voice in the conversation. Mm. And Rhapsody, how about you, especially in the inter in entertainment industry as well? What is that like for you being a black woman in that space and having this platform and this microphone, uh, no pun intended, to be able to share your light and your truth and your artistry with folks um, who listen to your music? Uh, I think the hardest thing and challenge for me was to create balance again. Um, you know, I grew up where hip hop in the 90s and late 80s, you know, we had so many women and examples of what uh, femininity looked like in hip hop. And they were so varied from Queen Latifah to Roxanne Shantae to Little Kim, Foxy Brown to Lauryn Hill, Missy Elliott. And then it came a space, you know, where we weren't, uh, we didn't have a, a lane or a voice in a mainstream level. You know, it, it kind of morphed into mm -hmm. video vixens. Um, and then it, it was a time where you only had one or two voices. Um, but now, you know, the beautiful thing is the resurgence of women taking up space in hip hop and using their voice and, and being different. And that's just been a challenge to, you know, not be swayed by what's popular um, and to mm. remain true to you. You know, saying so, you know, that's been a challenge, but it's been a beautiful and good fight. You know, I, I don't think I would change anything um, at all because as hard as and challenging as, as it is, I think the beautiful thing is that, you know, in the same light as Angie, it's hard for her, it's challenging for her, but when it's all said and done, people are gonna look back and say, thank you for having the fight for us. Look at the fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way. If mm -hmm. I could be a voice for somebody to, to say, yo, you get to define what you how you wanna show up on the microphone in hip hop. You get to say what you wanna talk about, how you wanna dress, however that is, as long as you remain mm -hmm. true to you. 
So, you know, that's been the biggest thing is, you know, creating that space, maintaining that space, not tiring out and understanding that, you know, it's not for nothing. I like that piece about it. It's not for nothing and being able to essentially carry the torch and light the way for those coming ahead of us. So I want to ask, what is your greatest celebratory moment um, so far in your career? Because I know we talk a lot about the struggle and we talk a lot about challenges, right? But what about that self-celebration and also the celebration of just being a woman and a Black woman in this space and being able to take up that space unapologetically? What would you say to that, Rhapsody? Man, I can't ever pick just one, right? Because um, I appreciate <laughs> there's so many. Um, I look at my career and they're, they're all stepping stones for me. You know, um, I think shoot, one of the biggest ones would probably be winning Lyricist of the Year at the BET Awards. That's that's an award that I was the first woman to receive. And knowing mm -hmm. that there have been so many ill lyricists before mm -hmm. me to be the first, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, right? Like, you know, dag, like, why well, am I the first? But at the same time, I'm the first and I know I won't be the last. So, you know, mm -hmm. that was one, uh, man, you know, creating an album like Eve, where I got to celebrate women and, you know, expand mm -hmm. my sisterhood and make women feel good. And I'm glad that I could give them an album that spoke for them and, and told all, you know, the spectrum of who we are. Um, I don't know. I, going to South Africa, that was that was one of my biggest ones, right? I went to South Africa and I met this little girl. And she, she basically was like, I want to be like you. And for me to be in North Carolina and, and have influence over someone 16 hours over ocean and more land, you know, in a whole, in the motherland, you know, mm -hmm. that, that meant a lot, you know, that said that I don't have to be famous. That doesn't mean I don't have impact. Mm. And, mm. you know, that's, that's the biggest thing when you can realize, you know, you could be as famous and as rich as you want, but for me, if I don't inspire anybody a, a light a match in anybody that's the purpose in it you know that makes you uh it put meat meat, meat on the on the plate you know meat and potatoes it's, it's not mm -hmm. an empty thing that you're doing so you know those are just some i ain't gonna take up the time because i know angie I got it. a lot <laughs> yes and i'm gonna pass i'm gonna pass it to angie too and you know I, I think that's really interesting to hear you say like that intentional impact, like that is what influence is. It doesn't have anything to do with fame or notoriety, you know, like that one heart that we touch. Um, so Angie, I wanna talk about some of your celebratory moments in your career and what has been maybe one of the greatest milestones or stepping stones for you. You know, I think it's funny you were bringing up the impact because all of mine have to do with that. Anytime I have black girls who reach out to me and say, thank you for this book, because it's the first time I saw myself in a book. That's mm -hmm. that's the big accomplishment for me. When I have black boys reach out to me and they're like, I read this in the day and I hate reading like that's it. You know, um, my mm -hmm. biggest mm -hmm. accomplishment so far to me is the fact that I've hopefully shown children's literature publishing that black kids do read and other yeah. people will read about black kids because that was the assumption for so long. But more importantly, black kids will read. And, and knowing that I have so many of them who look to me and, and they, they, they feel me and they connect with me and, mm -hmm. and they trust me. That's major to me, you know. Um, you know, I, the other week, like Jill Biden she said, she just bought the Hate You Give, and she's about to read it. And like, that's that's dope. I will not take away from that. But having this boy in Philly come up to me, like, "Yo, Ma, I read this in the day. This is dope." That's even better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so yep. and and going around the world and meeting kids from all walks of life, and and knowing that I wrote something for them too. That's that's it mm. for me. So I, I'm so appreciative of my readership and the young people who trust me to tell their stories. Mm. Back words I are words are that. important. Yes, <laughs> yes. Through through yes. and through through and through. So of course I I can't not talk about self care in this space in this conversation, especially as Black women, especially as as folks who are giving you know, our art to the world, your art to the world. So Rhapsody, I'm gonna take it back to you. What is self-care teaching you about community care and the importance of sisterhood? Wow, um, I think the biggest thing I've learned about, and I've learned it within the last year and a half, right? Being in this pandemic and having to really sit down and be still and, mm -hmm. you know, heal from some things and unlearn and relearn some things is that 
in order sometimes to take care of the community, you got to start with self first. You know, you have to water yourself before you're able to water somebody else. Because once you're drained out, you're not giving your best to, you know, you know what it is that's important to you or, or, you know, touching to you. So, you know, for me, it's learning when to say no and when to say yes and being okay with that. Taking time to feel things, you know, and not extinguish them all the time. Sometimes you got to sit in the fire. Um, and, you mm-hmm. know, I've learned a lot about energy, too, you know, looking at things from a 360 perspective and, and allowing people to uh, go through their process without having to take on their energy, right? Because we all have a different process and timing of things. So it's, it's learning those things that have helped me mentally and spiritually and energetically to grow and to be a better person mm-hmm. to be a better artist, you know, and, and to heal. You know, I, I suffer from, from anxiety, panic attacks, right? And, and through this healing process, I haven't had one. I used to have one once, once or twice a day. I haven't had one in months. Wow. And I, I had to realize that it was stress. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of stress I was holding in and putting too much on myself and giving too much of myself um, and learning how mm-hmm. to balance that. So, you know, that's been the biggest lesson for me. You know, first, take time to heal yourself. Yeah. I love it. Angie, how about you? What is self-care teaching you about community care and the importance of sisterhood? And filling up your own cup. Yeah, it's, I have to piggyback off what Rhapsody said. For me, it was realizing that it's okay to say no. Um, it, for me, it was also mm-hmm. getting in therapy and getting in therapy regularly. You know, in the, in the black community, we don't talk about mental health nearly enough. And I am a firm believer in therapy. I have a black woman therapist who I adore. I'm so thankful for her. You know, and I'm on anxiety medication. I'm so thankful for it. I'm so thankful for the clarity of thought and mind that I have now and recognizing Mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't take care of other people until you take care of yourself. You can't take care of the community until you take care of yourself. But also realizing, too, that our so many of our communities are in need of that same help that I'm now getting mental health, you know. And, and speaking out about it and taking away the stigma from it can help in so many ways. So yeah, I, I'm learning that. I, I'm learning who I am. I'm learning to take care of me. I, I'm learning to say no more. And I'm learning that stress does not have to be normalized. Um, I think, mm. especially as Black women, we have, society has at times made us feel like we have to take on the world and we feel as if that's a normal thing. And we carry all of these different burdens at once. And it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to live stressed. We can find ways mm-hmm. to let stress go. And, and that's what I'm learning day by day. So, yeah, I'm in a way, I'm thankful for the pandemic for making me sat down somewhere, as the old folks say. You know? <laughs> and, yeah. and taking that time, <laughs> taking that time to breathe and get to know me and relax and and get my mental health right. Right. Mm, I love that. So before we wrap up, I definitely want to touch on leading by example, especially in the creative space. What would you say about leading by example as an author, Angie? Um, Is is there a responsibility, do you feel like, on your shoulders to lead by example as far as chasing your dream, um, sharing your stories, standing in your truth? Um, and if so, what is the importance behind being that example for those who are watching you and reading you? You know, I think there is. What I'm learning, especially these past few days, is that I can lead by example by practicing what I preach, by speaking up and speaking out. Like right now in my hometown of Jackson, Mississippi, residents have not, tens of thousands of residents, Black residents, have not had running water for almost three weeks now. And I've been very outspoken Mm. about that. And I wanted to show young people who are watching me or anybody who wants to be a writer that if you write about these things, be about those things. That for me Mm -hmm. is what leading by example means. It's not just writing about it, not just talking to talk, but walking the walk. Um, and, and, And also, I also understand though that I'm a role model, but it's not my responsibility to raise people's kids. (laughs) <laughs> like, but that. my responsibility to them, if nothing else, is to show what authenticity looks like. That's the one thing mm. I owe young people, 
authenticity. That's what they crave. That's what they want from so many of us. And they don't get it nearly as much as they should. And if nothing else, that's mm -hmm. how I'm going to lead by example, by being authentic, being real, owning up to mistakes when I make them, admitting when I'm wrong, because young people don't see that nearly enough either. And, and learning mm -hmm. from my mistakes. That's how I lead. That's how I lead. Rhapsody, how about you? How are you leading by example? Hey man, the writer said it the best. I mean, <laughs> words I right out of my mouth. I don't even know. But, um, <laughs> I mean, just to add, I mean, that's it. You know, authenticity, showing up as as yourself, um, as imperfectly perfect as we are, um, and allowing mm -hmm. people to see that. And it's okay. I think we uh, sometimes, not we, but we in general, we fall into a. a a situation, especially with social media and everything coming at us so fast where everybody's trying to be perfect or trying to be this. And that's not reality, you know? So mm -hmm. as long, I feel like as long as I wake up every day and look myself in the mirror and I'm proud at who I am and what I do, and I do things that are true to me, you know, that's the best way that I could, you know, lead by example is, is making space for people just to be themselves. And that's what I love about Angie. That's what I love about Cardi B. That's what I love about, I can go on and on, Kendrick to, you know, whoever else. <laughs> but, you know, just allowing people to, you know, fill space and say, you know, whoever you are, there's space for you. Your light is good enough. Mm. You know, you don't have to dim your light for anybody else. Um, you know, and you do that by not not trying to uh, follow a trend or trying to, you know, be popular. Just be you. Because at the end of the day, if you anything else other than who you are and your true self, you're going to burn out. It takes a lot of energy to be fake, you know. Um, mm. And, you know, that that would be my advice. We only got 15 minutes, though, for real. <laughs> it's 627. I'm I think saying. our time is up. I'm <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this was so great. Thank you for sharing space with me. It's been an honor to get to talk with you both and get to learn more about you and what you're passionate about and just keep being lights in this world. Um, this is just amazing. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank but before you. we get off, because the, the queen is here, I just got to say, like, you are important. I see you. I appreciate you. Um, I, I became an MC and I love words because of books, right? Books was my first love, whether it was the mouse took my cookie. I don't remember the exact name of it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Or a coldest <laughs> winner ever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's those that taught me how to use my imagination and use a, the power of words. And, um, you know, so thank you for being an example for these kids because it all, it all starts with language. Um, and I just got, I had to give you your flowers. That's what, that's what community and sisterhood is about. So I just want to end on that note. <laughs> I gotta give That's you a beautiful yours. way to end. <laughs> Wait, I got to give you yours because if it was not for hip hop, I wouldn't be a rap, a writer. I used to want to be a rapper, but I couldn't do it well. So I figured, let me tell stories instead because you all gave me permission to be authentic, to be honest, to be real, to be raw and to not hold back. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for that. I would not be a writer if it were not for hip hop. And I would not be a writer if it weren't for MCs like you. So thank you. Oh, thank you, sis. See, it's circular. We give and receive to each other. And that's what makes the community beautiful. Thank you, A Money, for holding yes. us down. <laughs> Always, y'all are bomb. You. This was great. <laughs> it's awesome. Hi, I'm Angie Thomas. Thank you for watching Epic Reads. Click here to subscribe and hear for more videos.